The Bronchoscopy Education Project is designed to provide bronchoscopy educators with competency-oriented tools and materials that can be incorporated in whole or in part into various training programs. Materials can be used to train student bronchoscopists and assess progress along the learning curve from novice to competent practitioner. Results from numerous surveys have identified a diversity of bronchoscopic practice and training. A need for increased exposure and in education, particularly in regards to the use of new diagnostic technologies and therapeutic modalities, was discovered. Another major conclusion drawn from these surveys was that bronchoscopists wanted their pulmonary societies and training institutions to not only initiate, but also disseminate informative materials and programs that would help improve the overall practice of respiratory endoscopy, including bronchoscopy. In most countries, the diversity of the educational process has been the consequence of a lack of uniform requirements, the paucity of structured curricula, the absence of validated measures of competency and proficiency, and the difficulty in providing a basic framework for bronchoscopy education that adequately fits the needs of physicians in training as well as of those physicians already in practice. The Halstedian educational model, which entails a C1, do one, teach one form of learning based on an apprenticeship has been traditionally used in medical and surgical education. Learning, however, depends on the variety of experiences available, the amount of time dedicated to one-on-one -on -one instruction, the quality and interests of the teacher. Training program directors declared a trainee's competency based on overall numbers of general procedures performed without actually measuring either technical skills or cognitive bronchoscopy related knowledge. Perhaps most importantly, the Halstedian model of education has been based on the premise that patients do not mind that their physicians learn by performing procedures on them. Advances in simulation technology increasingly warrant that neither patients nor live animals for that matter bear the burden of procedure related training. In bronchoscopy, in fact, there are now several validated high and low fidelity models available as well as validated multiple choice questions and interactive learning modalities whereby adult learners can enhance their cognitive, experiential, and technical skills both away from and at the bedside. Recently, there have been several changes in perception about the educational process, many of them prompted by the Accreditation Council of Graduate Medical Education's advocacy of a competency-based rather than process-based model of education. While various conceptions of competency exist, one is to consider competent a person with the skills, understanding, and professional values necessary for providing consultative services and performing flexible bronchoscopy independently. At the same time, competency-based education warrants that each competency be teachable, learnable, and measurable. Evaluation and assessment should allow documentation of how much students are learning and how well they are progressing in their acquisition of knowledge. Assessments also identify the strengths and weaknesses of an educational curriculum in order to make improvements. The words learning curve were originally used to describe the rate of increase in the productivity of airplane manufacturing workers who, while performing constantly the same procedure, typically became more efficient. In medicine, a learning curve applies to a process where performance improves as a function of practice. This curve may be more or less steep depending on the learner's skill, experience, and on whether the procedure being learned is new or established. Along with other developmental stages of learning, we increasingly tend to differentiate medical practitioners into novices, beginners, intermediate learners, experienced, and experts. In this regard, an expert in one technique may be a novice in another, but may climb the learning curve more quickly than one who has no prior experience in any techniques. Competency can be identified somewhere along the learning curve, depending on the skill being acquired, and increasingly involves also obtaining a certain degree of proficiency determined by outcomes. An excellent example of skill-based competency is driving an automobile where, in addition to needing to pass a written driving test pertaining to the rules of the road, one must also demonstrate the ability to control the vehicle automatically. 
And similar to driver's education programs, the ideal learning environment is learner-oriented so that guided training and practice can improve analytical and technical skills. A learner-centric, competency-based educational program warrants that teaching be criteria-driven and that content be grounded in real-life experiences. Individualized instruction, independent study, and the use of various assessment tools can help learners achieve learning objectives based on explicitly defined expectations. Curricular effectiveness should not be assumed, but can be studied to identify areas for improvement. Train the trainers seminars can help assure a degree of uniformity in both the curriculum and in the way it is delivered. At Bronkospi International, a group of dedicated educators are committed to the design, development, dissemination, and implementation of an increasingly uniform method of bronchoscopy education. This not-for-profit organization partners with national and international organizations and university teaching programs to provide education based on local, regional, and national needs. Its philosophy is grounded in the concepts that knowledge be readily accessible and that patients not bear the burden of procedure-related training. Because we believe that education requires structure, just as one learns to play a musical instrument or participate in an athletic activity, we support the idea that factual, technical, effective, and experiential elements of knowledge and skill can be acquired in stages. We support the idea that deliberate practice is beneficial at both the individual and group level, for after all, bronchoscopy, like healthcare delivery, is a team process. In addition to on-site lectures and workshops, a web-based six-part curriculum is freely accessible and growing at the www.bronchoscopy.org website. Various other social media modalities are also being used to disseminate materials, including Facebook and YouTube. The curriculum includes reading materials, the web-based essential bronchoscopist now translated and available in eight languages, slide presentations and an image atlas, didactic lectures, a bronchoscopy step-by-step -step learning program, and a series of validated assessment tools. For the most part, procedures are deconstructed into three primary components that include strategy and planning, technique, and response to complications. A four-box patient-centered practical approach exercise tool has been devised to help learners think through the procedure-related consultative and performance process. These four boxes, inspired by medical ethicist Al Johnson's four-box approach to clinical ethics, includes components of the initial evaluation, procedural strategies, techniques and results, and long-term management plan, including expected and known outcomes and quality improvement assessments. On-site and web-based curricula are designed so that educational content includes various multimedia technologies, problem-based learning exercises, interactive sessions, instructor-learner feedback, hands-on skill stations, and a diverse set of assessment instruments. Train the Trainers programs are conducted internationally so that educational projects can be conducted regionally by instructors in their native language. Learners are thus introduced to a bronchoscopy curriculum that has been studied and practiced by experienced trainers who are familiar with the five concepts of the program. These include the use of mandatory reading assignments to provide a framework of factual knowledge, the practice of bronchoscopy step-by-step -step technical skill exercises, the analysis of patient-centered practical approach scenarios, and the use of a variety of checklists and assessment tools to enhance patient safety, promote instructional uniformity, and to assure competency. In this way, it is our hope that a group of well-trained, experienced, and dedicated bronchoscopy instructors will be able to fulfill the many different roles required of a true educator, whether it be in the realm of assessments, information delivery, curricular planning, or resource development. I would like to provide you now with a brief overview of Part 1 of the Bronchoscopy Education Project. This is the Introduction to Flexible Bronchoscopy Competency Program. Upon completion of this program, 
Participants should have increased their knowledge pertaining to patient evaluation and selection for flexible bronchoscopy, acquired new knowledge and understanding of diagnostic flexible bronchoscopy, mastered airway anatomy, and learned several techniques of bronchoscopic inspection, improved their ability to safely, effectively, and independently obtain bronchoscopic biopsies, as well as brushings, and perform conventional transbronchial needle aspiration and bronchoscopic lung biopsy. The program is comprised of a series of ongoing lectures and hands-on workshops that, in addition to bronchoscopy-related knowledge and technical skill training, warrant mastery of procedure-related issues such as informed consent, procedural pause, and the use of universal precautions. Programs can be instituted regionally or in dedicated training centers and might include a combination of computer-based instruction, pre-course independent study assignments, and specifically structured hands-on training sessions. This program was designed in an effort to improve the uniformity of bronchoscopy instruction and to ensure coverage of the major knowledge and skill sets needed to perform flexible bronchoscopy procedures independently. The completion of assigned reading materials is expected as part of the adult self-learning process. Assessment tools, simulation and patient-focused scenarios, and checklists should be performed under designated observation, however, with instructors signing off to document adequate performance. The program is an attempt to make goals more specific and uniformly applicable in an environment that has suffered from non-uniformity due to a large number of small groups of learners and instructors participating in national training programs. It is expected that minor modifications of this program will be made based on user input. The program is meant to complement apprenticeship-like instruction and does not represent a change in scope or curricular content of pulmonary and critical care medicine training. We recommend, however, that training programs encourage completion of the program during the first year of training, leaving time for learners to complete subsequent programs, such as EBIS and Introduction to Interventional Flexible Bronchoscopy, for subsequent years. Obviously, these conceptions of bronchoscopy education are open to appraisal, criticism, rejection, modification, and adoption in part or in whole. I hope that you will join us in this exciting endeavor because training bronchoscopists today saves lives and reduces patient suffering. It also contributes to the education of healthcare leaders who will discover new ways to prevent, diagnose, and treat a variety of lung and airway diseases tomorrow.